Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies, and today I want to tell you about all of the best movies Netflix is adding in January 2019. It is a new year, and this is my new look, so get used to it. That's right, it's 2019 already, and if I'm the first person you're hearing that from, uh, you can probably go ahead and come up out of that bomb shelter. Turns out nothing happened in 2000, and you've just been down there for 19 years for no reason. All right, all right, yeah. The uh, first bit of the year, admittedly, not a great one. Uh, however, however, uh, Netflix, this is a great list. Netflix added a ton of great movies in January. I'm gonna tell you about each and every one of them. Starting with one, they added at the very end of December as sort of a surprise, which is a special feature length episode of Black Mirror, which is one of my favorite shows. It's a feature length called Bandersnatch. Now the really cool thing about this is it's interactive, dramatically affects the outcome, and the cool thing is it's woven into the story. Black Mirror is a perfect series to kick this feature off with. I expect we'll see more of these in 2019. If you want to just experience something different, I definitely recommend checking out Bandersnatch because once it concludes, you can then further explore and see what the other outcomes may have been. So it is a good watch. I'd give yourself about two hours to watch this one, though. Now, there are a lot of things added January 1st, including The Dark Knight. You know, The Dark Knight, to me, does such a great job of standing on its own. I've watched it the most out of all the Batman movies. It's by far, in a way, my favorite. Uh, not just because of Heath Ledger's performance, even though it is, I think, as brilliant as people say that it is. Uh, it's just a really, really great uh, movie. There, there's not a lot of fat on it. Um, it, it just, it's it's fairly tight and it's in my opinion the best movie based on a comic book series we've ever gotten. Black Hawk Down is also added. This is one of my favorite war movies. Now it's not necessarily the best of all time but this one really does it for me on several levels including the fact that it is just non-stop and it's not that uh, war movies to me need to have a lot of action but this one just really I mean, does not stop. It's entertaining, but it's also really gripping. Uh, the cinematography is incredible. It really is just a masterpiece from Ridley, Ridley, Ridley Scott. I think it's one of the best things he did post-80s. You know, his best work to me was really in the 80s with Blade Runner and Alien. This is one of the best he did after those. Uh, I, I just love it. I can watch it anytime. Pulp Fiction just got added. Uh, I'm not going to go on about Pulp Fiction. There's a reason it's so great. It, it's it's entertaining. It, it's so well written. It's so fun to watch. Uh, it really got me into movies uh, more so than a lot of others. I mean, it really was sort of a, a significant uh, watch for me the first time I saw it. I saw it on VHS before DVDs were a thing. So the only people watching now that might be really super excited to see that it's added are younger viewers that never got around to watching it. If you're the least bit interested in movies uh, and, and as sort of picking them up as more like a hobby and sort of dissecting them and picking them apart, Pulp Fiction is a great place to get started. Another one I love, I mean, I'm telling you, January is a great month for Netflix. The Departed just got added back. Uh, they keep adding Martin Scorsese movies kind of one at a time, sometimes two at a time, as they're leading up to the release of The Irishman, which will happen sometime in 2019, uh, The Departed will be a great one to watch in preparation for The Irishman. Just a really, really great gangster movie. I'm a big fan of the genre. And with The Departed, Scorsese worked in a lot of little cues from other classic gangster movies. For instance, the original, original Scarface. Every time somebody's about to die, uh, you see an X. Sometimes it's a shadow. Sometimes it's a piece of a structure. The same thing happens in The Departed. Every time somebody dies or is about to die, there is an X hidden somewhere on screen. There's a lot of stuff like that worked in. On top of it just being one of the most fast-paced edited movies I've ever seen, it really, to me, is a masterpiece. Uh, I think it's going to continue to pick up an audience. I mean, it did well when it came out, but people kind of don't talk about it that much anymore, and I think a younger audience will find it maybe 10 years from now, and it'll, it'll have more traction. One of my favorites from recent years, and I've talked about it here on the, on the platform, even though it has not been on a streaming service yet, 
is Hell or High Water. Now this is actually directed by the same guy who did Outlaw King. And even if you didn't like Outlaw King, I highly recommend Hell or High Water. It stars Chris Pine and Ben Foster, who's one of my favorite actors, as a pair of brothers who are robbing banks across West Texas. Uh, it's got a, it's modern day, Jeff Bridges is in it. It's got a really good story, uh, really well put together. Again, it doesn't forget to be entertaining. It is a serious movie, but it doesn't forget to be exciting and fun to watch as well. Just really one of the better gems from 2015, I believe. Uh, if you have not seen it, I cannot recommend this one enough. Make it one of the first ones you watch off of this list. The entire Indiana Jones series just got added. A great watch. I recommend watching them together in order, skipping the last one. There's some stupid, stupid stuff in that movie. I, I don't know what Spielberg was thinking. However, he was brilliant when it came to the first three, and they stand alone on their own really, really well. Uh, I love each and every one of them for different reasons. I, I would probably rank them as Last Crusade, Raiders, then Temple of Doom. Uh, some people hate on Temple of Doom, but I actually really like it. I think it's a lot of fun. It's just not as good as the others. Pan's Labyrinth just got added, and despite Guillermo del Toro's uh, The Shape of Water winning a Best Picture Academy Award, I think this is his best work. The Academy doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. Uh, this one is really, really a masterpiece. It's got some horrific elements, some beautiful elements. It, it's the most tightly knit story I think he's ever told. Uh, just really great stuff. If you miss this one, it is foreign language, but again, I say this all the time, there's not a ton of dialogue in this one. It is more of a visual feast. There's a little bit of English. Uh, you're not going to spend the entire movie reading. You're going to get to watch this movie, and you're just going to have to read some subtitles for context. So I highly recommend watching this one if you've passed on it for years. Uh, odds are a lot of you watching have seen this one by now, though. One of my favorite movies as a teenager, uh, I watched it all the time. I just really liked it. And I say teenager, older teens. I mean, I was probably like 17 when I got really into this movie. But Swingers has just been added. Uh, Vince Vaughn is great in this one. Vince Vaughn gets a little bit of hate now because he's, all his movies turned into the Wedding Crashers. After that movie was so successful, he just kept doing characters like that over and over again. But this one's really great. It also stars Jon Favreau, who's a just brilliant director now and filmmaker. Uh, he's great in it. It's a fun story. If you've never seen it, no, it's not about people that, that wife swap. Uh, it's just about uh, uh, guys that go out and are trying to meet women in the bars in LA in the 90s uh, and it's just really well written. There's really good scenes in it. You really kind of get attached to the characters. It's got some fun sequences. If you never saw this one and you're a fan of this channel, just know this is one of my, or it used to be, one of my absolute favorite movies. And then finally on January 1st, the last one worth noting is Watchmen. Uh, I think this is a, a incredible movie it's got a lot of flaws in terms of storytelling, and I hang that on Zack Snyder, the director who went on to do Batman vs. Superman and Justice League, and uh, I, I think he's kind of a mess. But this movie is beautiful, and it's based on a really well-written graphic novel, so it is an incredible story. It just gets a little muddy, but if you can look past that, it really is an incredible thing to watch. Uh, it could have been... I think part of the disappointment with this one is it could have been so much better with the exact same production, just a little bit tighter storytelling. It could have been so, so much better. I mean, it could have almost been like the godfather of, of graphic novel-based movies. Uh, but that said, it's still well worth watching. On a similar note, HBO has already announced that they are going to have a Watchmen series, which sounds very, very interesting. So another good reason to go ahead and watch this one now. Now, before I get to everything coming out the rest of the month, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so in a number of ways. Start off, if you're new here, just click the subscribe button and click the little bell icon because you'll get notified when I put out new videos just like this one every single week. I'd also invite you to consider becoming a Patreon supporter or you can just visit the Teespring store and pick up one of these custom designed shirts by me. Uh, and if you become a Patreon supporter, you could get a free t-shirt based on which tier you pick. Now, immediately on January 2nd, I don't know why they couldn't squeeze it in on the 1st, but Monty Python and the Holy Grail comes out. Uh, I love this one. It's not my favorite. Uh, the, I think The Life of Brian, which is still on Netflix, is better in The Meaning of Life. However, The Holy Grail is a lot of fun. It is a classic for a reason. Uh, there, there's so many good moments in this one. Again, one for younger viewers. Had you not seen this one yet, this one is required viewing. It is a must-watch. Uh, you, you're going to learn where a lot of references in other comedy come from with this one. 
On January 4th, Solo, A Star Wars Story, come out. Uh, this one bombed at the box office, I think for a couple of reasons. One, it's not that good. It's good enough to watch. It is a good recommendation. It's, it's a good way to burn two hours. Uh, it came out too close to uh, the, the Last Jedi. There was only a few months in between. No one was starving for Star Wars. Disney's screwing the pooch with this one. Uh, not just this movie, but they're, they're releasing these too fast, in my opinion. If you disagree and you want more Star Wars, let me know in the comments. But if you think they're overdoing it uh, and you agree, just give me a little wink uh, in the comments as well. Uh, one for the kids, Hotel Transylvania 3 comes out. These are fun. I mean, these are Adam Sandler movies. He is the voice of the Dracula. And a lot of other uh, Sandler uh, characters are in them. You know, David Spade is in it. Uh, Steve Buscemi. People that you see in all of his movies, they're in it as well. But it's family-friendly enough. There is some gross-out humor and stuff. But it is for kids and for family, so it's not super, super edgy. And they're good. They're fun. It's a good little story. Uh, this is probably not one to watch by yourself if you're an adult, but it is entertaining enough for you to watch with kids, nieces, nephews, and the like. One of the, one of the bigger releases uh, for the month is Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, they're releasing all the Marvel movies, which will not continue to happen for long, so take advantage of them while you can. They just released Infinity War uh, on Christmas Day. Now you can watch Ant-Man and the Wasp, so you get to catch up on the latest and greatest from Marvel. They're putting them all on uh, Netflix and then they come off eventually, so be sure to watch them. However, when Disney releases its new platform, you are no longer going to get Star Wars and Marvel movies uh, or Pixar movies, which I'm getting ready to recommend in just a second, uh, on Netflix or any other streaming service. You're going to have to pay for them separately with a Disney service in just about a year or so. And then on January 30th, one of the best reviewed movies of the year, The Incredibles 2. This one is full of action. It's an unbelievable, I think it's a little over two hours, which is an unbelievable runtime for an animated movie that costs as much money as this one does. Uh, but this one stayed in theaters for a really, really long time. People seem to really, really like this one. Another great one to watch with the kids. On the contrary to Hotel Transylvania 3, uh, I think The Incredibles 2 is one that adults can watch on their own and enjoy, especially if you've liked any of the other Pixar movies. To me, Pixar really truly just does the best with these animated movies, not just in terms of the quality of the animation, which they do have an edge on that, but their storytelling really is the best, making these the best movies, uh, the best animated movies on the market right now. Hope you enjoyed this list. Hope you got some good recommendations for the month out of it. Uh, I, like I said, I took a break. I will be back in full force in January, so look forward to more content coming out of Flick Connection. But I will keep making videos just like this one as long as you keep watching them. But thanks for checking this one out, and you will see me on the next one.